pretty hot. That's sizzling. <laughs> Seven years ago, when we first moved to our rural property, one of the very first projects, DIY projects we ever did, was build this beautiful cedar hot tub. Ready? We're kicking this off in three, two, one. Ah! I know. More water. More water in. And I've got some really bad news. It's gone. Let me tell you what happened. Before I show you where the tub is now and what our plans are for it next, let me back up a little bit and tell you a little bit about this hot tub because it's a lot more than a hot tub. You see, when we moved to this property, we actually planned to build a home debt-free and we wanted it to be a timber frame. But the problem is we didn't really have any experience with a lot of construction and we certainly hadn't built anything together as a couple. And so we decided to tackle a deck and a hot tub. I know, before we built a house, it's the crazy easiest thing. But what this project allowed us to do was to work together as a team, try some ideas, kind of learn some tools, and you get a hot tub out of it. I mean, how is that a bad thing? So what we did was we actually found a place that sells um, material. They call it seconds. And what that means is that the boards didn't make grade. And so what happens is they get bought by somebody else who can't sell them at like the premium market price. And so they sell them at a discount. But what was cool about this place was they allowed us to pick through the wood that was in the unit and kind of pick which boards we wanted. We have a little secret. If you've ever tried to buy clear cedar that doesn't have any knots in it, plan on bringing out your wallet because that stuff is crazy expensive. But we found that these boards had huge knots in them, like this big, but all around the knot was clear wood. And so we brought all this lumber home and we sort of did some like woodworking ninja stuff and we figured out how to take the clear wood out of these boards and make staves for a hot tub. And then we had somebody else help us by cutting a canoe joint into these staves. We then found some tongue and groove boards and we built a floor out of that. And then we cut this dado joint in the bottom of our staves. We wrapped it in some really cool aircraft cable that's stainless steel and we put these turnbuckles on it and we had built this beautiful cedar hot tub all on our own. All right, so we've got this really cool cedar hot tub. Uh, how do you heat this thing? Uh, so we had a lot of ideas on how to do this, but in the end we ended up finding through the grapevine uh, a, a used snorkel hot tub stove. We couldn't believe it. What turns out happens is these tubs actually rot after a few years. And so what you'll see is you're driving down the highway, running the back roads, you'll see this stove sitting out in a field somewhere. And it turns out there used to be a hot tub around it. So we had somebody who said, hey, I know of a guy, he's got a tub, it's all rotted out, but the stove is fine. We said sold. So off we go, we find this stove and we have to kind of finagle it a little bit because it was built for a tub bigger than ours. But lo and behold, we got it installed and we have ourselves a DIY wood-fired cedar hot tub. And then we had just finished building this DIY deck using a chainsaw mill and it sort of overlooked our little cabin down there where we lived in a 19 foot RV for three and a half years while we built our house. And so we got to enjoy this really fun cedar hot tub on this deck. Let me show you the view that we got to enjoy in this thing. This is why we moved here, why we built the deck and why we built the hot tub and ultimately why we built the house. That's the view from the hot tub. Many nights after a long day of working on our water system or running our sawmill or working on our house, we would come up here, light the stove and just sit in the hot tub and enjoy the beautiful mountains and the weather and the colors, the sunsets, so much pleasure. Well, I've got some bad news guys about DIY wood-fired cedar hot tubs, especially off-grid by the way, did I mention that? And this is really the five things that contributed to the premature retirement of this hot tub. And I wanna show you that this hot tub is actually still in amazing condition. There was really two key mistakes that we made that, that spelled the early demise of this beautiful hot tub. It makes me really sad and it makes me really excited to build another one. The problem number one, nobody tells you about. It gets really cold in the winter time. And whether you bathe in this hot tub or not, you've got to keep it at least above freezing because if the tub freezes, the damage that happens to the tub is 
bad. It can push the staves apart. It can break the floor. A lot of bad things happen. So we found ourselves many, many, many nights after a long day of work, going up and lighting a fire in the tub, even though we did not intend to use it. That's not a bad thing, but I'll tell you what, it's just a matter of time before you make a mistake. You either don't get to it, you forget about it, or the probably the most insidious one is where you light the fire and you think it's good and the fire goes out. You wake up in the morning, check the tub and it's froze over. And those types of things ultimately do a lot of damage to the tub. Well, there it is, our DIY cedar hot tub in all of its glory. Of course, it's been dismantled, and as you'll see in just a second, there's a couple of really key lessons you can learn if you're ever gonna build one of these things. So the second thing that really did a number on this tub, which we wouldn't have predicted, is the wood stove itself. You wouldn't believe it, but the amount of heat that this stove puts off, if the stove is not fully submerged, which was a small mistake that we made early on, we misjudged our water level when there's nobody in the tub. And so there were times where the top of the stove was actually exposed. We identified it and we made some corrections by lowering the stove in the tub. But the effect was it actually cooked the top of the stave. There was actually some subtle burn marks on the staves itself. And they kind of sustained some pretty lethal damage in the upper inch or two which really isn't that big of a deal because it doesn't really hold water that much. But we know that that was kind of a factor in sort of fatiguing the wood and ultimately in damaging the tub, something that was just really hard to fix. Another thing nobody really talks about is what happens when you have a family emergency or something when you need to be away from your property for an extended period of time especially during the cold season. So we had an unfortunate event. My father passed away and ironically, we had just emptied the tub to clean it out before winter. It's something that was part of our fall routine was to drain the tub, give it a good scrub down, clean everything out and fill it up basically ready to use for the winter. Well, we had to be away for almost a month and I'm not even kidding, when we came back, there was a crack in the floor that was almost six inches wide. The floor had dried out and buckled up. I was absolutely distraught. I thought, is this gonna, I mean, is this the end of the tub? The good news, I don't even know how this is possible. We kept putting water in the tub and somehow the floor laid back down and we got two more years out of this tub after that, which is nuts. But my point is that if you have a situation where you, you take your eye off of your tub and the water is gone for any amount of time because this stuff holds so much water that as soon as it starts to dry out, which happens very quickly by the way, it will actually split and crack the tub violently and you might as well write the thing off at that point. Okay, now that we've given full disclosure about the true cost of ownership of a wood-fired cedar hot tub, there are two mistakes that we made in the construction of this tub that we could have avoided and had we avoided those two things, I am convinced this tub would still exist right now. I'm honestly not sure what we were thinking at the time, but we were using a tongue and groove V-groove floor. And you can see right here as we round the corner that the groove is still present. And so what's, what's going through my mind today is that we must have been on the nubbin for the width of this floor. And the right thing to do would have been to shrink the tub ever so slightly and make this a perfect curve. And so what happens is there's a flat spot right here, right on the curve of the tub. You can see that it's just straight for maybe about six inches. And that six inches was not making really good contact with the stave in the floor. And so this area was one of the areas that was prone to leaking. Let me say the leak was small. This is something we tolerated probably for four years because it was so benign that we just added a little bit of water each day or every couple of days and it was no big deal. So that one, ah, not a very good decision, but we could have survived that one maybe for a little bit longer. And now for one of those things where we should have known better. This floor was actually built with what is essentially a fencing material. It's cedar, but it's a tongue and groove V groove. You'll see that there's a little V here where the tongue and groove come together. And while it didn't really structurally compromise the floor, there's an issue along the edge. And that is where the V groove happens the amount of contact that this made with the staves on the edge of the wall 
resulted in a couple of places where there was just very, very little contact. And while that in and of itself wasn't a major deal breaker, it ultimately contributed to the compromise of the tub. You can see that we tried some sealants and things, and they actually did work pretty well. I'm actually really shocked how well some of these marine sealants work, but ultimately it didn't save the tub. And if you guys have ever tried to do anything below the waterline, you know how hard it is to get things to seal up well. I want to say that this wasn't a case of chosen materials. This was a case of building with what you have. And when we were looking for this lumber, we stumbled on this fencing and it seemed like it would be a great solution for the floor. So obviously if we were to build another tub, which we've actually already done before, is use a different flooring material with a very nice solid edge, very smooth, and you'll get a very tight seal and you won't have these issues. I think it really sucks that such a small mistake is what ultimately cost us the tub. Basically what happened is we got to a point where the leaks were substantial enough that even adding water every day or every other day was simply not enough. We had added a small like horse trough kind of uh, float system where we could connect it to water and keep the tub full, which works really great, except during the freezing season, which is most of the time where you're using the tub. And so the hose and the hose bib and the faucet and everything were prone to freezing. And it gets to the point where you're basically just nursing something that's basically dying a slow, miserable death. The other problem is that we had actually upgraded at some point to an electric uh, pump and heat system to try to remove a lot of the maintenance problems that we had with trying to keep this tub alive. And that worked really, really good. And I think that's the reason that we got two more years out of the tub because hate to say it, but it was a set it and forget it system. The filtration and the heat and everything was automatic. But unfortunately over time with family and things, the damage to the tub was such that it finally met its demise. This was not a decision I took lightly. I have spent months nursing this tub because I wasn't ready to give up. And I think it's time to give up, but I'm not ready to give up on the wood. I think that wood is symbolic for us. It's not just a cedar hot tub. We didn't buy it off the internet. It showed up from the UPS or Amazon or whatever, and we put it on our deck. We built that deck, we built this hot tub, and they both represent something to us. We're building a custom dream home, and I wanna use this wood somehow in the future in this home. So I think this is gonna live on for a long time. I don't know if you guys have ever had this happen, but I feel like it's possible to leave just a little bit of your soul in a woodworking project. This is so true of this tub for us. As we were making the really hard decision to decommission the tub, I was having a lot of really strong reminiscing thoughts about the challenges we had building this with very few tools and man, very little experience. And all the challenges we had even getting it to hold water because at the time we didn't even have any water meaningfully on the property, which is what pushed us to get our water system built. And then of course, there's all the late night, don't really want to character building that happened trying to maintain this thing off grid. And of course, all the wonderful soaks together, drinking a hard root beer after a long day of working with maybe the sawmill or chainsaw mill or working on the house and really being able to visualize our dream while soaking away the aches and pains of living our dream. Those who've been following this channel for a long time will understand what we mean when we say that this hot tub has been a very big part of our journey. Dear hot tub, I don't know if you'll ever see this video, but we wanted to take a moment and say thank you for everything you've done for us. You were a challenging project. You pushed us because we had very basic tools and we were as green as green could be, both as couples, as craftsmen, and you helped us to learn to work together, to build bigger projects and to challenge ourselves to do things that we didn't even know we could do. I know you had some blemishes, you had some wounds. We did our best and tried to make you the best hot tub we could. And we did everything we could to keep you warm in the winter, but we know there's many chilly nights where we probably let you freeze a little too much. And we're sorry for that, but we're human and you're very high maintenance. <laughs> and so we hope that you'll forgive us for those things. We wanted to say thank you for all the warm soaks, for the laughs, for the beginnings of our videos, the endings of our videos, and the hope that you represented to us. And thank you for letting us laugh as a family and bounce in the hot tub and share that and um, play, play games as a family and enjoy this beautiful view. 
We hope you enjoyed your view. We hope you had a good life. And thank you so much for everything you gave us.